Hello everyone. Greetings. This is another one of my irregular blogs, and I'd like to do so by visiting an old scenario that I've written. Uh, that I wrote actually 10 years ago now, and I wanted to check in on it. Uh, my apologies if I'm a little haggard. It's for a reason which is all too apropos for this time. Uh, I ended up spending uh, hours last night and this morning in the emergency room for a family medical crisis. And that's what I wanted to talk about. Uh, one of my scenarios, so to back up, a scenario is a story about the future where you try to imagine what would happen to the world if one or two trends really had a strong impact on it. And there are a lot of scenarios that date back to the 1950s. It's a pretty popular method in the futurist's uh, uh, methodological toolkit. Uh, and I've written a bunch of these, uh, which I use in different ways. And one of them is called Healthcare Nation. And I came up with this, like I said, around 2014. And the idea is pretty simple. I just took a look at the American healthcare sector, the whole thing, the whole you know, soup to nuts, everything from uh, nursing and surgery to pharmacy, electronic medical records, to hospital administration, public health, all of that, in that one big sector. And I just saw that it was growing. It was growing in terms of total number of people hired, uh, in terms of amount of money, uh, its footprint in towns and cities. And just, all right, let's just extrapolate that. Let's just see that going. Let's goose it a little bit and see what happens when healthcare become, or allied health becomes the dominant sector in the American economy and the biggest presence in American society. I mean, think of it as a kind of successor to uh, manufacturing back in the 20th century. So based on this, you can imagine a few different things happening. Uh, you can imagine, for example, uh, ways that this would occur and the reasons are pretty clear like the American healthcare sector right now is financially a mess It's very very expensive and produces inferior results to our peer countries So let's just imagine that continues to go so that it gets more and more expensive There's more frustration, but it continues to grow There's also demographics behind this as I mentioned last time that we have a population that is getting older and older And just statistically the older you get the more health care you tend to consume so you put all this together and assume that uh, this is a powerful driver for American society. And you think about what this means. And I broke this down into a few different ways you can read the scenarios. I'll put a link to it in the uh, description field. I mean, one of them to think about is that there's a lot more interest in education. That is, there's a howling demand for more and more uh, workers to work in everything. I mean, nursing is famous for uh, having uh, never enough uh, nurses. But you could think about uh, people working in all kinds of fields including psychotherapy of course uh, surgery I mean the whole the whole system just needs more people and the education system is happy to produce more so you see more students taking more classes in everything you know again from uh, pharmacy and dentistry to computer science so they can work on electronic medical records and all of that uh, and you see more programs supporting this, so more labs on campus, uh, greater use of things like simulations, because that's an established uh, medical pedagogy, and then more and more degree programs uh, branching out into other fields. And so, I, I mean, I posited this in 2014, and every year I check in on it to see how it's doing, and basically it's continuing to grow. Uh, the sector continues to rise, uh, the Affordable Care Act didn't really rein this in, and it seems likely that uh, this is a, a fairly good bet for our uh, medium-term future. And banking on this is a good thing to do for the near-term future. Uh, for quite a few colleges and universities, expanding your allied healthcare offerings just seems like a good idea if you do it right. So the reason I'm talking about this today is partly just to say this is a scenario that uh, I'm pretty fond of, although audiences tend not to be excited about it. Audiences often say, eh, okay, we expect that, no big deal, we live in this, especially audiences living in uh, places where uh, the population is already older than the median in the United States. But the reason I was thinking about this uh, development, I picked this up last month at the ASU GSV convention, uh, where it looks like Bloomberg's charity operation is working with New York City schools in order to create healthcare schools, high schools, not colleges and universities. And let me just read from their uh, description. In January of this year, Bloomberg Philanthropies announced a $250 million initiative to create new high schools around the nation that will graduate students directly into those high demand healthcare jobs. This first of its kind initiative pairs public education systems. So this is pro this is not private K through 12. This is public K through 12. 
um, and hospitals in 10 communities across the country. These high schools will offer students robust academic program, specialized healthcare classes, work-based learning at a partner health system, and the opportunity to learn industry value credentials and certifications. Immediately upon graduation, students can directly enter healthcare jobs within the partner healthcare systems. So this is actually an interesting example of what I was talking about. And I did mention a little tongue in cheek, the idea that high schools would offer pre pre-med classes. And that's, that's, this seems to be that on steroids, if, if this gets traction, if this takes off. What I was surprised by is that last bit, uh, that students would go from graduating these high schools directly into work, bypassing colleges and universities. Now, this is a trend I've been tracking for a couple of years, and that is what seems to be a bipartisan desire to reduce the labor market's demand for post-secondary credentials, for an associate's, a bachelor's, master's, PhD, and so on. And this has been occurring in different ways. I'll talk about this in another video. But I just wanted to note that there, that the you could think of this as a supply and demand issue where the demand for this kind of labor is so great that they're willing to cut out uh, colleges and universities. You could be more cynical than this, or perhaps more critical, and say that, well, probably uh, high school students will be able to claim, or high school graduates will be able to claim uh, lower compensation rates. So this is good news for hospitals, clinics, and so on who want to save money. Either way, it's a very, very interesting data point. And my question for all of you is, in general, are you seeing any signs of the healthcare nation scenario coming true around you in your lives? And also, are you seeing any signs in particular of these kind of pre-pre-med high school programs? Uh, well, that's it for now. I hope you're all well. Look forward to hearing from you.